Hi and welcome to our OCR AA level biology revision session with me Christine. So today's lesson I want to look at DNA sequencing which is part of your manipulating genome topic area. So let's just remind ourselves then we have our DNA and our DNA will be transcribed to produce pre-mRNA. Through the process of splicing we will end up with our mature mRNA and that will then be translated to give us our polypeptide chain. So our genetic code, that DNA sequence, codes for the sequence of amino acids and that sequence of the amino acids is our primary structure of our protein which is held together by peptide bonds. So what you have to understand then is Fred Sanger developed an effective way in which DNA sequencing can occur and he did this in 1977 and it takes a few steps to get to the point where we can actually say with certainty which DNA bases are within that sequence. So the first thing that they need to do is extract a sample of DNA from cells. And then they use restriction endonucleases. Remember, these are enzymes that are going to digest the DNA strand into varying length fragments, and they will cut at very specific recognition sites. So my example that I've given you before is eco -RI, and that gives us three strands, let's say, BAMHI, that would give us two fragments and if we put the two together we would end up then with four fragments. So by putting in restriction endonucleases we can create these DNA fragments which have different lengths. So what the Sanger technique is, is that they're going to do a process where they use a thermocycler machine. Now it's the same process used for PCR, the polymerase chain reaction, where the temperature will be raised up to denature the sample. Annealing will occur where a primer will be added and extending where polymerase will build those phosphodiester bonds in that strand. So that is exactly the same process where it's going to go through a cyclic machine where you're going to have this increase, decrease, increase of temperature. So what we need to understand is that our DNA sample, when we look at DNA sequencing, is mixed with a primer, with DNA polymerase, with excess free nucleotides so that they can build the new strand. But because we're looking at sequencing, we're going to add something different. We're going to add a small amount of what's known as a terminator base. Now a terminator base is called a terminator base because it's going to stop the DNA synthesis from occurring. These DNA bases, these terminator bases, lack a three carbon hydroxyl group. Therefore, if there's no hydroxyl group at the third carbon of these nucleotides, they cannot extend the chain. So they're going to terminate the chain at any point where they will form the complementary base pairs. So forming hydrogen bonds. So the other thing you need to know is not only are these terminator bases going to stop DNA synthesis, what they also have is these bases have a unique fluorescent dye attached to them. So that dye is going to then indicate, for example, if it's an adenine nitrogenous base, if it's a thymine, if it's a guanine, if it's a cytosine. So each of them have their own unique fluorescent dye attached to them. So through the cyclical machine, what's going to happen is the terminator bases are going to be added at random. But after many cycles, all of the possible DNA chains will be made. So any time a terminator base forms a hydrogen bond because of complementary base pairing, it will terminate the chain. So that will stop it and we end up with all these random fragments. Well, what we can then do is we can then separate those fragments according to their lengths by what's known as a capillary sequencing. So we're going to use gel electrophoresis, but this time we're going to put this electrical field applied to a capillary of gel. So it's a very small capillary made up of this gel. We know that the DNA is negatively charged. We know that it will migrate towards the positive electrode through the gel and we know that smaller fragments will move faster. So what happens then? Well, what happens is there's a laser that is going to 
signal, because it's a fluorescent dye, it's going to be detected and signal when a base goes past the laser. So the minute a base goes past the laser, that is going to be detected by the presence of that fluorescent dye and that can then be used in a computer to analyze and to therefore give us which of the bases are going through and we then end up with our sequence. So in this case we have cytosine, thiamine, thiamine, adenine, cytosine, guanine, thiamine, guanine, adenine, cytosine, adenine, thiamine, cytosine. So because the smaller the fragment moves faster, the longer the fragment moves smaller, each time that base goes past the laser, it is going to be identified. Now, the development of the Sanger technique obviously happened in 1977. Well, that was a slow process if we think about today's process. The techniques are improving as technology is improving. So another technique which sped up DNA sequencing, increasing the rate at which we in sequence is through the development of nanopores. Now you don't need to know any information about nanopores, however you do need to understand that it works in the same way, in that the DNA base sequence will be able to be sequenced, we will know the order of those DNA bases because of the terminator beta and the fluorescent dye. So other developments have increased the speed at which DNA can be sequenced, such as high throughput sequencing. So that's the name of the improved technique that you need to know is high throughput sequencing. Now, this is just basically a method of reading the genetic information really quickly and in large quantities. There are others, the whole genome sequencing, process of reading all the genetic material, next generation sequencing, faster, more efficient way, and pyrosequencing. These are all other techniques that could be used. However, in your specification, they only really want you to be able to state the high throughput sequencing and the Sanger technique with DNA se sequencing. So I hope you've liked this video and if you have, then please do click on the like button and subscribe to my channel. And if you haven't already done so, please do check out my revision platform, www.aiqchat.com.